Hello everyone, Wylock here. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. This one's been on the back burner for several years now, but I finally got around to it. Glad I did because it's really cheap, really easy, and fun to do. It took me about three hours, excluding weights for dry time, so let's just dive right in and make some pipes for our tabletop scenery for sci-fi and modern gaming. This is PVC pipe. Specifically, it's half-inch diameter pipe. You can find it at any major home improvement store like Lowe's or Home Depot. I think in the UK the big chain is called B&Q, but also smaller local hardware stores like Ace will often stock this stuff also. It's about $2 for 8 feet. Very cheap. Nearby the pipe you will find the various connector pieces. These are slip fit, not threaded fit, very important, and obviously they are half inch diameter to match the pipe. They are less than a dollar a piece, again super crazy cheap. This is a coping saw. Usually it's used in fine woodworking, but it will cut PVC pipe like butter. This saw is under $10 from any store that sells tools. Just make sure you get a coarse tooth wood cutting blade with it, not a fine tooth metal cutting blade. It really is this easy. Just cut various lengths of pipe ranging from say one to 10 inches, whatever you want really. Note that this does produce a lot of large flake dust, but it does not create fine particulate airborne dust, so inhalation really isn't a concern. That said, wear a dust mask if you're really worried about it. Also while we're here, I made a few of these busted open pipes with sludge pouring out, so to achieve that look, I cut at an angle most of the way through, and then with some channel locks, or literally any sort of large pliers, just tear away at it and break pieces off so it looks like it's been exploded. Attaching is very simple. Healthy bead of hot glue just inside the junction and insert the pipe. This is plenty strong enough for terrain, but it is definitely not unbreakable like it would be if you were using the proper cement for real plumbing. So if you make a mistake, you can twist the pipe and with a little elbow grease, it will break free and you can reposition it. As for that busted pipe, I shimmed it up on some cardboard, put wax paper under the outlet, and then with a nice hot glue gun, just started injecting it there at the outlet, allowing it to flow down naturally, just like real sludge would do. About five minutes later, with that totally cooled and hardened, I went back in and did a second layer, just letting it flow and droop down and create a second layer. This also causes the vertical portion to become much thicker and stronger, and creates a nice layered effect of the pool on the ground. I think I did a third application, and then from there the wax paper just peels right off and this pipe can now be placed on any battle mat, any terrain, without the need for a base. But wait, I hear you screaming, why don't you just paint up the connectors and the pipes separately so that you can build whatever you want before game time, modular like Legos? The answer is, you, you won't. You just won't find that it's worth the novelty. It's much easier to slap these instantly down on the table and go. If you make a dozen of them with diverse size and configurations, you will find that you're never at a loss for a particular shape. Your tables will work out just great. Plus, there's the issue of paint scraping off as you insert and remove the pipes from the connectors. Anyway, to the garage I go for some primer. Krylon and rust both make fine matte primers. Then I experimented with a few different approaches to see which I would like best. And so we'll dive in in just a moment, but first, real quick, it's time to sell out. There are multiple ways to support the channel if you find the content helpful. Number one, like, subscribe, reminder bell. Number two, Patreon, Wylock's Armory. Number three, Amazon affiliate links. Just use the links in the video description below when you buy stuff. Totally transparent to you, the only difference is I get a small commission. Number four, Heroes Horde. For you 3D printers out there, tons of selection, including all True Tiles lines. And number five, my modules on the DMs Guild, written for D&D 5th edition. They're pretty good. Not great, but you know, good. Now I have all these environmental effects paints that Vallejo sent me a while back, and I thought this was a perfect opportunity to test them out. So on one of my test runs, I applied them, knowing full well that this wasn't necessarily the intended use for all of them, especially the fuel stains one. The engine oil one was nice, but I'm just going to use a black paint wash for this project to achieve a similar result without wasting the good stuff. I did discover though that the rust effect is pretty awesome. So what I'm trying to do is approximate the look of the official Promethean pipes from Games Workshop. So the pipe bodies are painted a color called Doom Bowl Brown traditionally, and then the unions are all just a metallic. 
So I had been using this barn red color from Apple Barrel, but I was finding it took four coats to get solid coverage. And then with waiting for dry times, I'm gonna be here all day if I have to brush this by hand. Likewise, the rust kit. So by starting the rust, I start with a burnt umber and base coating these, multiple coats as well. So instead of doing that, I went out to the store and I got two more shades of spray paint. These are flat primer grade uh, spray paints. This one is sort of gonna approximate the Doom Bowl Brown. This one is gonna be my burnt umber. Now once I spray one, I'm gonna have to mask off to spray the other and taping is gonna be a pain as well. So instead of doing that, I got some nitrile gloves and I'm gonna use my hand as the mask. So I'll show you what I mean. So to the garage and I just hold it exactly so that my gloved hand masks off the pipe and the brown spray paint only hits the junction. And it technically worked, but this was kind of finicky and wasn't really working as easily as I hoped it would. So I did end up just taping them off. It only took about 15 minutes to do all of the taping that you see here. No big deal. So then I spray painted the junctions brown, came out beautifully, but like a dummy, you can see I removed the tape, which I didn't mean to do just yet, so I had to retape them again. Anyway, kitchen sponge, make sure it's damp with all the water ringed out of it. And then I started with terracotta, kind of a muted orange color, sponging that all over the junction, about 50% coverage. And then honey brown, again, sponging it all over, a little less this time, so you get a nice marbling effect of the dark brown, terracotta, and honey brown. And now onto metallic silver. I did try gunmetal for this, but it didn't get me enough contrast. It was too dark, so I switched to silver. Sponge this on fairly solid. Leave the edge rust mostly exposed, and also notice that it's difficult to get into those crevices where the direction changes, and that's fine. That's naturally where you'd expect rust to collect anyway, so let the piece do a lot of the creative work for you. This will look pretty bad when it's wet, but give it time and it dries nice and smooth and shiny. Next up, a simple wash of one part black paint to 10 parts water and slathered that on the pipes themselves. I did not apply this to the junctions. Once that dried, back to silver with a sponge and just nick it a few spots on the pipe to give it some character where the paint is starting to chip away. Looking good, nothing wrong with this. Could totally stop here, but I wanted to try out that Vallejo rust effect. So I painted some on straight from the bottle around the collars where the pipe enters a junction and then with a slightly watered brush, dabbed at it to sort of blend it out, smooth it out. So yeah, pretty awesome. Again, not necessary. Here it is with the effect, and here it is without. You could probably substitute some watered down brown acrylic paint and get a similar looking effect if you wanted. For the leaking Promethium sludge, I airbrushed Vallejo Game Color paints, as I've done for plasmas in past videos. First, solid base coat with a dark blue, easy enough. And then with a light blue, I hit the central areas of the flow to start that gradient. And then with white, an even tighter, smaller area inside the light blue, and this is what gives that nice glowing effect. Easy. Here we go, lock, stock, and barrel, full table setup, got some towel models, some knights, and some ultramarines, just to help show scale. I like a very dense field. I like a table that's full of terrain, both for the aesthetics and because it tends to eliminate shooting lanes. It makes tactics a lot more important. You will probably notice that there's like a manufacturer logo embossed on the junctions. You can shave those off with a crafting knife. It's just a little tedious. It's not hard. I determined it wasn't worth my time. I know some of you are thinking, apply a gloss sealant to the sludge, right? Make it shimmer. I don't like doing that. Not all liquids should have a gloss applied to them. First of all, I need to record this stuff in battle reports. Anything with a gloss coat does not film or photograph well. But also when you're there at the table with an overhead light, you can get glinting reflections off of gloss finishes. It's not pleasant for you just as a player. 
So I do use it sometimes, but I don't think you need to default to it for all liquids as a course of habit. You could seal these, but a fingernail test showed that they don't scratch. That was good primer I used, so I'm not gonna seal them. If you want to, I can attest from experience that Krylon Flat will not kill the silver metallic shine, even though it's a flat finish. You still get a nice metallic metal look. And everything on this table has been in a previous episode or will be in an upcoming episode. You might notice those junction box buildings. Those will be next time. By and large, I am happy with how these turned out. What they're missing is more greeble. So rivets, spikes, just strips of metal on them, stuff to make it more interesting. And I can always tack that on afterwards. But the problem I had was the curved surfaces. So it might have to be something 3D printed or flat card stock, I don't know yet. Durability would also be a concern there. But they are definitely missing greeble. They need something to make them a little more interesting. If you like this particular project, here's two more you might want to check out. Also, enjoy this community showcase. I'm Wylock, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time.